Hi. Now, if I was on your regular fuel-powered motorcycle, I would hardly be able to speak to you like this. You wouldn't hear me because of the noise from the engine and the exhaust. But I'm on an electric motorcycle here in Nairobi, and in this video, I want to understand how they operate, how the transition has been like for people who switch from fuel-powered ones, and how the costs of running both compare. Built for their eco-friendliness, low running costs, energy efficiency and noise reduction, e-motorbikes are on the rise in Kenya. They are common among motorbike taxi operators, commonly known as border borders, and riders for e-commerce and food delivery startups like Jumia, Glovo and Uber Eats. According to data from Kenya's Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, EPRA, the number of electric vehicles and motorbikes registered in Kenya increased by more than five times in 2023. There were a record 2,694 electric vehicles registered, up from 475 units in 2022. Some of the companies leading the switch to e-motorbikes in Kenya include Iwaka, Spiro, Rom Motors and Steamer, among others. My rider Mbugwa Chalo switched to an e-motorbike six months ago and says he does not look back. I was a bike for fuel, I was a bike for So I was a bike for fuel, and I was a bike for fuel, and I was a bike for the end of the day. So it was a cost. Pa day one is a patrol maker. Ma after so saba thou alafu ina dependele distance maker. The moment you get poya iba, you'll get advantage because si taji pu charge place your hotel. Ni me pio ni me nuwa bike ni me pio charge angu na battery ni min kona. So ni zai charge ya kwa soko tia kijani. Tokens in Malizi ni smoja ina Malizi ni smoja. Okay. So ni kushu ni na kwa gatu fit ni kengia ni ku charge ni hivi. Ile ingine ni kona ni cost. Alafu ni kona ni pamse ni ingine. So we per day le doing na create most ni angu. But we first need to understand how e-motorbikes differ from petrol-powered ones. Chalo takes me to Iwaka for a chat with co-founder Jimmy Tune. What what exactly am I looking at here? So this uh, this is what we call the motor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's like the engine of the bike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you don't. Most motors have yes. it at the front. Yes, for the traditional, I would have the engine here uh, and the chain or something here uh, yeah. that connects it to the back wheel. Exactly. Yeah. So we have two types of e-bikes. Yeah. Maybe I can say shortly. Mm -hmm. We have what we call a mid-drive motor mm -hmm. bike, mm -hmm. and then we have a hub motor. Mm -hmm. So this is a hub. Let me start with the hub motor. This one basically the motor sits on the back tire. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then uh, that's like the engine and everything that, you know, powers the bike to move, you know. Mm. Now the mid-drive motor is whereby you have the, um, the motor, the motor <laughs> in between. Yeah. That's why it's like the mid-drive, you know. Ah, so okay, it okay. also can, comes with the chain yeah. and then it pulls the back tire. Yeah. So it's not sitting on the back tire. Yeah. With this e-motorbike, one can plug it in directly to the power source, like they would an electric car, or take off the battery and charge it separately. Basically here, mm. what you have here is a tank. Oh, okay. So the design is meant to mimic what people are used to, uh -huh. from a form perspective, okay. you know, so that you see something you're familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> so here we'll, we'll put the charging yeah. from the tank, mm. um, but the tank itself doesn't have anything in it. Mm. It's not like you can be able to use it. It's not useful, yeah. which is something we are changing yeah. to make it as a storage space. E-motorbikes mm -hmm. is basically, uh, you can compare to like an automatic car. Mm. Everything is automatic, right? So when you put the ignition on like that, mm. right? The bike is at, you can see it has P. It's parking, yeah. Right? Yeah. What you need to do now at this point is that you would just click on the left hand brake. Yeah. When you click on it, it goes off parking, as you can see. Okay. When it comes to, when you can see speed at zero, zero, it yeah. means the bike is now ready to go. Yeah. So if I throttle, it's going to move. Mm. Right? On a full charge, the battery can give a range of 80 to 100 kilometers. But there is a catch. And you mentioned about the the automatic aspect of likening it to an automatic car. Mm. How does it look like for for an electric motorbike? Do we have automatic motorbikes and the manual ones where you you, ch <laughs> you shift the gears on this side of the of the of the motorbike? So I've not seen one with gear shifting. Uh. But what happens? There are two types of motors. Again, one. 
this is automatic so you can just um, you know when you are on you can just throttle and go mm. now the gearing so you can change the gears here ah, yeah, on this on this button yeah, okay. right so this is the first model mm -hmm. the second model is that you don't have to change manually mm -hmm. but as you accelerate mm -hmm. it the motor actually changes it you know for you based oh. on the speed and you know and the terrain yeah. it can be able to do that again automatically okay. you know yeah. for this one it's just here mm -hmm. So you just switch from one to three. Mm. As you can see, this bike can go only up to three mm. gear um, levels. Mm. With e-bikes, it depends. There are like um, many things, but I know of three. One is the speed. Let's say if you go on three all the time, mm. Cindy, mm -hmm. and then you're just speeding. Mm -hmm. That, you know, um, depletes it's the yeah, battery faster. faster. Yeah. If you are, um, again, carrying so much weight, continuously mm -hmm. for a given period of time it drains the battery also faster mm -hmm. number three is that if you're on like hilly terrains mm -hmm. that's where you operate from mm -hmm. of course it you know it decreases the battery faster mm -hmm. okay so another interesting detail people wonder about these electric motorbikes is you see for the fuel powered equivalent mm -hmm. the power is determined you know, there's language of this is two 200 cc this is 150 cc mm -hmm. to determine to have an idea of how, ma how much power this has what's the e electric motorbike equivalent of that so that is the motor power uh -huh. like you have three kilowatts yeah. you have 2.7 okay. you have five kilowatts yeah because the motor is like basically where the power powers the bike yeah, yeah. so that will be the equivalent uh -huh. Mm. And another thing is, can you drive it during the rain? Or how does it fare with water? <laughs> no, definitely. So yeah. you can you can ride on the rain. Uh -huh. You know, I know this is, comes very fast because it's electric. Ex so people exactly. are afraid exactly. that yeah. you might uh, blow up or something. Mm -hmm. So most EVs have been designed in a way that they meet certain waterproof standards. Mm -hmm. So that you know you can ride on any any weather, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So even our bike, you can you can actually do ride on on water. Mm -hmm. But I think, of course, when you tell people this, you have to caution people yeah. also that it's not like now you start making the bike Waiting swim in the, water yeah, yeah. and the battery. You have uh -huh. to be cautious uh -huh. that it's an it's still an electric powered vehicle. Okay. So you know you you minimize exposure to, to water to as water. much as you can. As of the end of 2023, the total number of EVs registered in the country was 3,753. This has been attributed to the incentives the Kenyan government has introduced to promote the e-mobility transition. Kenya aims to raise EV ownership to 5% of all registered vehicles in Kenya by 2025. Iwaka says since they began operations in early 2023, they have so far put over 800 electric bikes on the road. The startup imports the e-motorbikes as completely knocked down units from China and assembles them in Nairobi. However, one of the major challenges of electric motorbikes has been the high initial cost. Iwaka's motorbike, for instance, costs about 260,000 Kenyan shillings if one offers an outright cash payment. It is because of this that many of the e-mobility companies in the country have partnered with credit providers to create payment plans for riders. Now what the e-bike uh, is doing compared to the petrol bike is bringing down day-to-day -day cost of operation. You know, things like um, servicing and maintenance, fueling, which is completely taken off. But then now, that's just one part. There's the part of owning the bike today. If you're gonna buy a bike today, an e-bike, of course it's going to be more expensive than the petrol bike. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will not stay like this forever, mm -hmm. but um, the total cost of ownership today is cheaper on an EV than a petrol bike. In a bid to encourage people to switch to e-mobility, the Kenyan government exempts electric vehicle imports from certain taxes. 25% import duty and 25% excise duty. But Tune says more could be done to support these companies. More incentives could be provided, for example, with the battery. Whatever uh, they had offered in the previous um, allocation of incentives was we didn't have the VAT removed from the batteries, for example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have an e-mobility association that is helping us to lobby for this kind of uh, incentives. I think also there's a lot of awareness and information that needs to be exchanged also with government, uh, the, the people who are making these decisions. 
It is the issue of the reduced operational costs Tune mentioned that e-mobility companies highlight most in trying to convince Kenyans the merits of going green. In the case of Charlo, he acquired his bike through a local credit provider Iwaka has partnered with. I've had this bike for now only six months in Malaysia. Mm. And when uh, I came to the bike, I came to Iwaka. Iwaka was introduced into a... Before I came, I came to a rider. I had two chances for delivery, for a delivery. I had to delivery for a while in Nandudi. I had to if I want to acquire it, I had to a platform to acquire a bike. So that is when they introduced me to Fortune Credit. Fortune Credit, I had to pay for a deposit of 25. So I had to pay for 25, I had to pay for a contract. I had to pay for the e-bike pole pole. So I had to pay for a contract, I had to pay for 25 Gs, I had to pay for a bike. bike. After that, I had to pay for a contract, then I had to pay for a bike. That is to, from any kila mwezi, because I had to weekly, but I had to kila mwezi, I had to pay for So, alafu mostly, I had to pay for a bike for deliveries. So, I had to pay for a bike, and I had to pay for deliveries at restaurants, and I had to pay for a chance to pay for a job. Then there are the service charges. Charlo says he only deals with changing brake pads and getting a few nuts and bolts tightened, which is done at the Iwaka service centers. <laughs> So lastly, I want us to do a fun little challenge, a little drag race to find out which one takes off faster between the electric variety and the fuel powered one. To watch this story and more, download the Citizen Digital app today.